Is hybrid working messing with our mental health? As a mental health professional, I'm going to say yes. Let me explain why. It was the 26th of March 2020 that we very first went into lockdown. We kind of knew it was coming, as you might remember, all those years ago. And now as we sit here, we have never gone quite back to normal. And for many of us, we celebrate this as a huge positive. And one of the big positives about that is hybrid working. Now, we could probably spend a whole video talking about how all the ramifications of lockdown and COVID and all of these things, how it's affected children, how it's affected general mental health, how many of us have never gone back to the normal life that we had before. We don't go out as much. We don't spend as much time outdoors. For many people who are of a certain age and above, especially those that are elderly, they've never quite got back to how it was. So yes, it did have far-reaching ramifications. But what I want to talk about is how it affected us in here because of how we work. Now, one of the things that came out of lockdown that was seen as a huge benefit was the whole idea of working from home. This was something that before we went into lockdown was always seen as a privilege of certain people. It was a chance to sky for certain people, a chance to sit in the house and go, yeah, yeah, I'm working, of course I am, and definitely not something that everybody could do, especially if you worked in an environment that traditionally meant that you had to be in the office. For example, if you were part of a call centre environment or if you were part of some sort of admin team or you processed paper or anything like that, there was the imagination that we all had to be in the office. And as we went through 2020, 2021, and even a bit of 2022, that all changed. And as we came out of it from April 2022, when lockdown finally ended and the restrictions were lifted, then what happened was that never came back. This idea of hybrid working is now something that we all take for granted. However, it is messing with our mental health for a few very, very good reasons. Before we go into that, let's look at some of the positives. And let's start off with the top one. Now, just to show you that this is the top one, Gallup did some research in June 2022 and asked people what they thought about hybrid working. And, and as I'll put it up on the screen here, then so that you can see it, the improved work-life balance came out as the very top thing that people said. But for many of us, we're still working out exactly what that means. What is work-life balance? Is it a better thing? And I'm sure it feels like it that you're at home for the kids, for instance, if you're a family with children, that you're there to take them to school or to pick them up from school, that you're there and you're around most of the time, that when they're on holiday, you're instantly available as mum or dad or whoever you are, that you can walk out of your bedroom or wherever you've got the laptop set up, an office in your house, the living room, whatever it is, and you can walk out and the kids are immediately there. This is what we mean by work-life balance. Now, pre-lockdown, people were looking for this all the time. I need better work-life balance because we were doing things like commuting and all of these different things. And obviously, hybrid working takes a lot of that away. We have no train journeys, bus journeys, commute, all of that is gone. And depending on where you stay, that can be a major benefit. Now, I live in Glasgow, which is actually a fairly small city, and suburbia is pretty close. Like, if there was no traffic, I can drive from here in the city centre of Glasgow to my home in roughly about 20 minutes. So it's not really that big a deal, but depending on the city you live in and how it's set up, that can be quite far out and these things can take quite a while. And I understand that therefore these are big things. What are some of the other advantages of hybrid working? Well, there was things like increased productivity. People said that when they were at home that they were actually doing more. People were saying that their physical health was better and that they were having less colds and flus, interestingly enough, by not being in public transport and not being around all of these different people. If you imagine now applying to a workplace that said that they didn't have hybrid working, now you would feel as if that workplace wasn't massively inclusive. It wasn't um, understanding the needs of people, perhaps even of you. Now, there's other advantages that we could go into, but one of the things that I like to talk to businesses about when I talk about hybrid working and its impact on mental health is that when we think about many of these things, apart from work-life balance, 
increased productivity, inclusivity, so therefore uh, you might be seen as a more inclusive workplace, that we have this better health, so therefore we're off work less. Is that really true? Have you found that absences have reduced in your workplace? All of these things I find that are very practical. What I would say is they're all external. They're all things about productivity, apart from work-life balance, albeit that there's an element of that that is also external because it's about, like, well, I'm at home for the children or I'm at home for my lockdown puppy um, that I bought that's no longer a puppy and is now this giant dog that I have to look uh, after all the time. So what are the disadvantages? Well, Gallup asked that as well. Here's the research on the disadvantages. And it's really interesting because what we now start talking about is the fact that trying to build a workplace culture is a very difficult thing. Now, you might think, well, I want to live my own life. I, I live to work. I don't work to live. Yes, but here's the thing. The, your office was one of the last places that you ever felt any community. I'm not saying you might live in a beautiful neighborhood where you know all of your neighbors and you speak and you all go around to each other's houses and have dinner parties. But for the majority of us, we actually these days live quite isolated lives at home. So when we went into the office, what we used to get was we used to get community. And that culture is part of that. We want to belong. And now we don't really feel as if we belong. Now, we tell ourselves that that's an advantage. You know, I don't want to be this corporate shill that just goes in and, and wears the badge and feels part of this thing. I want the ability to be able to change. If you don't treat me right, I'm going to go over here. And I will admit that is an incredible benefit of our hybrid working and a non-attachment to, for instance, the bank or the insurance company or the whatever it is that you work for. However... Actually belonging to something is a key part of our mental health makeup. Feeling as if we're part of something bigger. We are social animals and we have lost many of our social places. What I mean by that is that we no longer have this thing of I come from this area or this street or that I join this club because basically the online world has taken a lot of that away and just the way that our modern lives work, we don't tend to engage in that type of thing anymore. Now, you might be an exception to that rule, but I know that in the estate that I live in, apart from giving a wee hello uh, to my neighbours and potentially talking about the dogs, um, there's a little bit, you know, we know everybody's name and we're all very convivial to each other, but it's not like we're in each other's houses having dinner parties and solving the world. Where we used to do that was in the office with our office friends. Another thing that people are starting to experience with hybrid working is a lack of recognition. Have you ever heard of proximity bias? So let's imagine that you and I work in the same place and our boss is a constant office dweller, right? So they come in three, four times a week and I'm in all the time as well. Now, when there's a problem, boss turns around to me and says, Brian, I, I'm having this problem where I was speaking to this client and I don't know what to do about it, but what do you think? And I go, I don't know, boss. Why don't we do this? And they go, yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, thank you. That, that was really good. You're sitting at home hybrid working, nobody actually talks to you about that, and therefore when it comes to promotions or recognition, I'm getting recognition, and you're going, well, I never got asked that question. This is a real issue, and people are starting to feel it, which means that people are feeling undervalued, which therefore is affecting their mental health, because they're not in the office to get that proximity. And even then, even if we are separate, in the same way in an office, I might have said, or the boss might have said to a table of people, if even we're all hybrid, they'll now come to one person. It's very unlikely that they'll say, everybody, can you all jump on teams so I can ask this random question? That's not really going to happen. And ultimately what this leads to, and this is why I wanted to make this video, is it leads to loneliness. We might not have realized it before, but actually these microtransactions that we have. Now, what a microtransaction is, is when we are in situations and it's not like a big, long conversation, it's not particularly in depth, it's a microtransaction. It would be like me meeting you at the coffee machine and saying, oh, did you watch that thing on television the other night? Or have you heard about? And we may only speak for 30 seconds, but these little micro-connections, these tiny little connections, just even coming round and going like, oh, how are you? Are you okay? And people caring were a huge part of our mental health. 
And now what we have is we have people isolated and we have people isolated within family units, which is not how family units used to run. Now, I'm not saying in 20 years time, we might have changed our psychology to be able to cope with that. But I'm going to say just now that some of those advantages, especially the work-life balance one, you tell me now whether or not you enjoy that moment where you shut the laptop down. I'm sure some of you do enjoy this, but where you shut the laptop down and walk out of the bedroom, office, wherever it is, living room, wherever you are, kitchen, and you walk straight into a child going, what are we having for dinner, dad? What are we having for dinner, mum? And he said this and she said this. Do you enjoy coming out of meetings and having to go, can everybody just keep the noise down, please? Dad's still working or mum's still working? You see, one of the things that our commute gave us was it gave us a punctuation mark. It gave us a stop. And I get, like I said earlier, that some, some commutes are longer than others. I mean, again, when I leave my office tonight, I'll be home in about 30, 35, 45 minutes. I get that you might have an hour and a half, two hour commute, and that is a much different thing. But it's still the same concept from a mental health point of view. The switch between this is me in work to now this is me at home is entirely gone. But because we're so caught up in this thing of, oh yeah, but work-life balance, work-life balance, I live to work, I don't work to live, we are missing the fact that we are lonely. And we have a loneliness problem. And you might actually be part of it. Where we've not realised that because we kind of came in from lockdown, that actually we're still just isolated and lonely and disconnected and actually all we see is our kids and our partners and we've not been out in a good team night out in fact when there is a team night out now you go oh do you know what I don't know if I can be bothered when before you used to really love them because there were senses of community and a place to be able to take your suit off not hopefully literally depending on how drunk you got but you get what I mean these things were vital parts of our mental health and our sense of belonging and community and connection you didn't have to know these people in depth. You didn't have to be part of their lives every day, but it was nice to celebrate with them if something went well. And now what we do is we go, thanks everybody, and we send an email, and that's about it. It is not normal, and we are losing community and becoming isolated. And what I wanted to make this video for is just to get you to ask yourself, is that you? I was in a, a, an office recently working for a company. We were doing a session on this type of thing, which is why it's in my head. And they used to have this thing on a Friday where they used to have a, an old-fashioned drinks trolley. And on a Friday, they used to push the drinks trolley through the office and one of the managers would take it through and everybody would have one, maybe two drinks max on a Friday afternoon. Nothing too crazy. Nobody ended up like completely steaming or anything like that. Just this lovely social thing where everybody had this. And sometimes people would go out and out. sometimes people would just go home. Sometimes people would just don't, you didn't have to have a drink, but it was there for you if you wanted do you know what? Now, I was in their office, there was about five people in it. And again, that sense of community is gone. When I used to work in offices, well, I remember frequent nights out, impromptu nights out, where people would go, what are you doing? The lunches sometimes, when somebody was leaving or something like that, when we'd go to a local pub or somewhere like that, and everybody would get together because this person was leaving. Whereas now, for some of us, we'll just send a wee email going, oh, it's been lovely working with you, isn't that great? And again, we lose that connection. We are in a narrative at the moment that the reason that people want us back in the office, and this, I'm not saying this isn't true in some workplaces, that the reason that people want us back in the offices is so they can make us work harder and so they can observe us and so they can look over our shoulders. What I'm asking you is, is whether or not actually going back into the office could be something that you choose so that you begin to connect with people out with the four walls of your house and the people that you see every day. Microtransactions are important and hybrid working could be making you lonely. I just leave you that with a thought. Please subscribe to the channel. If you like these videos and you want to learn more about mental health, we're updating it fairly regularly. You genuinely help when you subscribe to the channel. Come and follow us on the rest of our socials and I hope to see you again soon. See you soon. Bye.